Hey everybody, this is Rhino. Let's see. Try that again. Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back with another live stream of Hearthstone. So today is February the second. It's Friday. We've got some stuff to do. We have a fifty here to trade. That's clearly the one to do. The fifty gets traded down to a forty. Which makes an overlap of playing five games with the Warlock on our Asian account to also get five wins for the win seven games in any mode. It would be really nice if there were any people on the Asian account to help with that one because that one is going to take a long time. I got a massive five card packs for the choose your champion so either i chose somebody who came in second place or first place or they're just getting really nice nowadays uh as far as how many extra packs this would be the point where i would start to think about maybe i should uh hold on to these packs until the next expansion if my gold count is any indicator we are halfway towards the next expansion uh, but Particularly on the Asian and European accounts, these cards are needed. If I can get one more Pirate, if I can get one more Murloc, uh, these aren't classic packs though, so the odds that I'll even get anything that interesting is kind of low. But we are getting the upgradable cards, and those are nice. Hmm. They might end up just having good wild collection in when this expansion goes to wild uh, just for that reason. Uh, one could certainly make the argument that as each expansion comes you're getting slightly better and better cards and so a wild collection that doesn't heavily use the classic cards that you would use in standard might be better uh we're about three fifths i would say towards there somehow i didn't buy an arena entry too but i guess that doesn't matter I'm not even sure i have a warlock do have this custom warlock which is probably just all warlock things so we're gonna have to start by disenchanting cards and then Let's look at the new. I adjusted my black background on the chat, so uh, after it crashed last time. Uh, let's go ahead and hit done here so we can see all the new cards. There's possibly some places in Hearthstone where it's going to slightly block, like this kind of blocks like some stuff but not really enough for me to mind it yeah we got lucky to have two of those cards and yeah we're filling in our collection I have 155 dust so missing then does become a question like with that much dust if I go to missing and we just try to do a diversity spread let's see missing classic cards to start with I, I could make I could start with the wisp that's a good card and then what else can I craft in these cards? Hmm. There are some con uh what are these rare cards I could make certainly, but I wouldn't want to. Hmm. If anything, I probably should look at pirates. Pirate cards and bring those in. And just more class cards in particular actually make some sense too. Like 
where was it? Where was it? We saw I saw one here. This and that'll make that easier. This and I can could could only really make two things, okay. Alright, well, s still a ton of dust needed. Hmm. We haven't gotten that mod yet. Uh, let's see, let's look at this custom druid and see what it is. Mm. Doesn't look like it's anything too important right now. So let's get rid of this. We've got to make a warlock deck that actually can win on a new account relatively new account four or five months old all right this one I'd imagine is in and this one I guess we'll get in and that one will get in and that one will throw in that one will throw in Restore some health. This one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. I'll take that. I'll take that. And what can we do elsewise? Let's see. Doom Sayer is a good card. I don't think I will put in the knife juggler, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Like three damage at random is not something I particularly want. Hmm. We'll take this one. Whenever your minions get die, gain an attack. We'll take that. We'll take the owl. We'll take one to restore health. Hmm. Still. Like, do people really play this enough so that you can steal control? Taunt creatures. Not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. And we're at 30 now. We only got up to 5. Whereas I would almost certainly argue we should put that in there. So what do we want to leave out? Hmm. Let's get rid of this one. And put in this one. And we need to get Prince Malkazar. Don't we have him? Where is he? Well, I'm only looking at classic cards. Well, that's going to be prove to be a really bad choice. Yeah, there's way better things to do. Get rid of that guy. Take that. Get rid of that. Take that. Hmm. Let's see. It's a, it's a shame I don't have more Cthulhu things because I probably could work with that. We'll take that back because I do want to play with that. It's crazy, I know. Charge attacks might work on a warlock deck. Hmm. 
But we definitely want Prince Malkasar in here. So we'll put that in there. We definitely need to come back now and look and see what else we want to do. Draw a card, deal two damage to your hero. Let me discard a card. Some taunt things. Hmm. Put that there. Some cards that just de destroy an opponent's deck. I'll take that. Hmm. Taunt. Yeah, I really started on the wrong side here. Doing things, Hellfire is almost something certainly we want. So get rid of that. Hmm. Hmm. What else do we want? Here's a card destroying character. I'll take that. Mm hmm. Well, that is something at least. And all those are standard cards. So we've got Custom Warlock 2. Let's. At least begin to play that. I don't know how much news we really have today. Probably a decent amount. We also need to play ranked play. So on the Asian account at least we've got five games. Maybe we'll get really, really lucky and get some quick disconnects. We kind of need something like that to happen. Uh, just to make this a quick, quicker experience. I also have the European and America's account to do. Of course, almost every daily quest done in the America's account could be done by cheating with my secondary account. Just playing myself. Let's, let's switch back over to news. There is a decent list of new things I'm not sure how much of it I really am gonna get into in a deep and meaty way however suppose the first thing we can talk about is how I didn't really do anything yesterday Decided to just call an audible and uh, and not really do anything with my channel uh, yesterday. Just take a day off. And I don't really regret it. It was nice to just, you know, take a break. Uh, this weekend I'll probably work. Wow, I I just milled a what looked like pretty important card to him. Dragon Call Alexa, summon five five dragon for each spell you cast. It costs five or more. I didn't even I don't even recall ever seeing this. Hmm. And they're playing the quest to take an extra turn with time warp hmm. which to do this you have to cast six spells that you didn't start with in your deck which is a pretty difficult quest hmm. I I'm not sure I want to play that so I'm just gonna draw and then attack and attack 
and then the turn. Hmm. Yeah, and I imagine since it's a Friday, uh, a Friday stream, nobody's gonna come on. But let's see, minutes cost two less, but no more than less than one. Hmm. So let's do this. I could have done that, but I'm not ready, I guess. And that. Uh, Yakuza 6 has been delayed. So Sega has announced Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, will now launch on April 17th in the West, around a month later than originally expected. Later on, the... Uh, there there will be a story I know about the uh, what is it the cost you know what I could have played this and then this would have only cost one and then I would have had enough of that that was bad play on my part um the CEO of of Sega, no, that's Sony. Actually, this is Sega. Never mind. There will be a story about the CEO of Sony stepping down, I believe. Um, Yakuza Six was supposed to come out March twentieth. The Yakuza series for me is is an interesting one because like I don't really have enough time in my mind to deal with the Yakuza series um, just as it stands um, see if I play this then this would become four so I can play both of these at the end of the turn next turn uh, I, the Yakuza series does look like something it'd be interesting to play it's kind of kind of like a GTA version but if you were playing uh, for Japanese people instead of for Western Americans type game with some more silliness and probably better story writing in the GTA series than than you would realize hmm There we go. Uh, but yeah, that's it's rather hard to get into it. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get into jobs today, so I'll leave that article alone for a moment. Summon... One one whelps or see do I want this one to die? I guess I do. Hmm. See and I've Almost got a full. Like, I've almost got this. Let me do this. And this. Just for the fun of it. Uh, the Pokemon Go developer Niantic has scooped up the augmented real reality API maker Escher Reality. Uh, so again, this is probably an aqua hire, just hiring the people, getting the patents and the technology. Uh, Niantic is working on an upcoming Harry Potter themed game, so uh, so that very possibly is where this is going to get used let's see should I wait or should I attack what is the 
death row. Well, that's a random mage spell to his hand in the turn. Hmm. Now at any point I can play this and probably should play this because I don't want to get a bunch of uh, hmm let's just keep playing let's see that's 10 10 doesn't work five we'll play this or do we play a taunt I think we have to play a taunt and then attack here and do this and then the turn So yeah, I, I could be missing lethal here. Somebody commented on one of my videos that I miss lethal about 1,200 times, and I'm like, sure, I'm like, <laughs> totally possible. And like, no surprise there. No surprise there at all if that was the actual truth of the situation. Hmm. So now you're out of cards. And I'm about to lose. <laughs> um. All right. Well, not a terrible, terrible play. I just goofed around with this card. Let's see. Showing off at the Pyro Blast. Uh, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age is now available for PC. I didn't realize it wasn't. You can buy it for Steam for $40. Uh, since they're up to Final Fantasy XV, that does feel like a slightly, uh, slightly high price, but then Final Fantasy XII, here I can watch the trailer doesn't look bad so uh, maybe the Zodiac Age subtitle there indicates that it is been remastered I mean this was originally a PlayStation 2 title so um, so it almost so certainly has been remastered yes it says here upgraded with a slew of enhancements from the recent console remaster of the game and for 20% off the uh, regular retail price. Hmm. Again, personally, I, I do want to own all the Final Fantasy games, but it is certainly like the Yakuza games, although, in all fairness, I would probably play a Final Fantasy game before I played one Yakuza game, if I had both, uh, it would really come down to time management more than money, uh, though. It would be like, do I want to spend maybe 50 hours more in a Final Fantasy game, or do I want to play a Yakuza game that would get less views? Hmm. And that's kind of a hard one to figure out. So here we'll just play the coin and do this. Hmm. I didn't watch much of this trailer, but it does look cool. I heard some people argue that it's Final Fantasy Star Wars. That's fine. The team-based uh, turn 
system seems to be relatively fast. That's something that can kill all the JRPGs and RPGs for me in particular is if it is a very slow turn-based system. Uh, I am also starting to, to think, I'm trying to figure out a way to cover this news and actually show things on screen. I'm not sure if there really is a way to do that, but um, it'd be kind of cool if I could. Hmm. Let's see, remove the top card from your opponent's deck. And do I want to do that? Sure, why not run the gamble of destroying a really important card? Or at the very least, destroying some card. The permadeath beat em up streets of red colon Devil's Dare Deluxe has been announced for PS4 and Switch. It's playing a parody to horror games and films that came before it. Hmm. And I'm looking at this picture, and it almost certainly looks like there's a Jim Sterling looking monster. Uh, big fat guy with a big black bowler hat and a red tie red eyes like I don't I don't see how that isn't the case and there's a life bar on the top that says I believe internet um, so yeah I don't know about that one Let's go ahead and attack here and then pump this guy up. Uh, let's see. Singapore based studio Secret Base is making this game. I've never heard of it. And I haven't seen any other coverage for the game. It's $8.99 coming out February 27th. Uh, the description. Let's see. Is. Not saying anything super interesting. Key features, super, simple sm Super Smash Brothers style controls makes it easy to learn and hard to man master. Dynamic evolving difficulty adjusts for the numbers of players in the game's parodies. The characters from Stranger Things, Rick and Morty, Attack on Titan, and many more. So, like, there's some weirdness there it seems. Hmm. Let's see. This is not a good card to play. Because you either have to wait till the ninth turn and be at 15 health. So wait till 10th turn and pay, be at 15 health. Or, hmm, or be able to heal yourself. And if you heal yourself, I think you're alright. I think it still counts. Hmm. It does say it uses in-game money for upgrades, run out of quarters, and save, and your save game dies with you. So it's this permadeath idea. Six unique playable characters over 13 bosses. So some big, so big they don't even fit on the screen. Hmm. Like this seems like this is definitely one of those pandering trash games. There's a Binding of I Isaac reference level hmm. let's see four and kill this one and that one I'm about to lose but I can't really do anything Like this could be a really good reference, like full of references game, and it could be really cool. But in almost all certainty, when you approach a game design that way, you're you're not doing a good job in your game design. All right, let's let's come back and adjust our deck. I had more cards than I thought I did when I first started building that deck, so. 
let's come back and try this again get rid of the molten giant get rid of the twisting nether and probably get rid of this and get rid of this the other cards moderately well Destroy friendly minion, restore eight health to your hero. We'll take that. Hmm. Let's see, life still deal two damage. Deal four damage. Discard a random card. Draw a card. We'll take another one of these. Hmm. Destroy a card with one random minion. Maybe that's worth doing. Destroy a minion in one of your mana crystals. Do I want to put this back in there? Deal one damage to all other characters. I'll put it back in there just for fun. So a slight change. Of course all the good players that are still at rank 23 until the rank updates hit right now. So like it's incredibly unfair to people that should be at rank 23. Which maybe that is me. Although I think at the very least I deserve to be at rank 20 or 19. Something around there. Uh, but it's unfair to try to climb the ladder while everybody else who should be at rank 15 or higher are also d have been knocked down and, and now they're climbing the ladder by crushing people who don't have the cards, don't have the attention span, don't have the skill to, to get higher. Uh, hmm. I'm really going in depth looking at every picture for this game, Streets of Red. A lot of it looks very contrast in it, its attempt to parody things. If this actually comes to PC, there we go, free victory. If, if this actually has come or comes to PC like I, I would be surprised there's a character with a Hyrulean shield with the uh, style shield there's a Rick and Morty guy there's one guy that clearly is Jim Sterling there's Shovel Knight character there's some kind of ninja character there's Friday the 13th there's the enemy from the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. The, yeah, there's this whole... There's a character I think might even be from Full Metal Alchemist in the middle. Yeah, I think this game would probably get sued out of existence. For this is like going too far with too many parodies or... Hmm. I mean, maybe you could get away with that. Maybe you can't. But starting the idea that you're going to make a game that parodies so many different things and just going down the list of the trending topics is as bad as what I'm doing with, with the titles of these videos now. When I'm just going down the list of trending topics and talking about things and labeling them as things where I won't be talking about the most trending thing uh, yeah uh, yeah it's it's just kind of pathetic to have a finished product that you expect people to pay for 
Like, I'm making a damning argument against my own channel here right now, but, like, I prefer original ideas in video games. What can I say? Like, I, I would also prefer to do original ideas on my channel. Unfortunately, YouTube is, has said and proven that they don't want originality. Uh, at least, not right now. They'd prefer people to do clickbait and drama. Uh, Far Cry 5 Season Pass will include zombies, Mars, and the Vietnam War, and Far Cry 3. Which, that makes an interesting argument for me because, like, I, I don't think I own Far Cry 3 or 4. So, this works pretty well. Let's see, this, this, and this, and this. Hmm. That was cool how two actions overlapped. Uh, so... The three pieces of DLC is going to have a Zombies DLC in Far Cry 5, which is weird because, like, Far Cry 5, you're kind of in the middle of Minnesota or some some central state that is just heavily forested, and zombies would kind of make sense, but not completely. And then you're going to Mars, which that makes no sense at all. And then the Vietnam War makes no sense. So it's it's all just some real craziness. Um, it does make me a little bit afraid of the quality of Far Cry 5. Which was already a little questionable. Because Far Cry 3 was good. Then Far Cry 4 was really just Far Cry 3 again. And if Far Cry 5 is just going to be Far Cry 3 again. And it's coming with Far Cry 3. Or Far Cry 5 is going to be worse than Far Cry 3. And it's coming with Far Cry 3 to, to sell it. Like, that's not good. And that's kind of what it sounds like and feels like. Hmm. Let's see what I want to do. I attack this. I kill this guy I do this and then I play this to irritate him I suppose hmm Suppose I could play this guy, then play this guy and absorb him. Hmm. Let's watch the trailer for Far Cry 5. I, I have a lot of tabs open, but I'm not sure that they're not just very repetitively the same stories over and over again. I saw that they said the more you mess with the cult in Far Cry 5, the more the cult's probably going to mess with you. Which implies that there's... Yeah, a beginning level of just not being uh, really too much of a problem having too much of a problem with them hmm. there is some dangerous politics certainly having a cult run in the middle of the United States that they could certainly end up stepping on people's toes or alienating half of the of a very divided United States that exists right now and probably has existed for a very long time uh, let's see just go ahead and silence you so now you feel like a fool and we'll go ahead and play this and see what happens squirrels whatever Like, 
So, I really don't trust the creators of the Far Cry series to do this in a respectful and well thought out way. Considering this game, one of its major selling points was originally that dogs can can go steal guns from enemies. And in this trailer, they just showed uh, somebody driving a tractor and killing people. Hmm. Sixty-three damage to everybody. Let's do this. Now, do I want to protect or do I want to attack? Let's protect. Hmm. So, a new series is starting on my channel, I guess, right about now. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is up to episode 7, and Enslaved Odyssey of the West just aired today. So, we're starting to to move forward into the next game. These 30 minute episode games on weekdays only are gonna be a little bit of a long haul for two to three months. And then around April, uh, I'm gonna start, I'm s starting to schedule things to air a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. He stole my card. Hmm. Hmm. There's a game called Gunpoint Heat Signature that is teasing an XCOM-like battle mage strategy game. Now, if you're talking about XCOM, it's probably PC Gamer that's talking about it. PC Gamer in particular, the, the writers are very obsessive about the things they write about. Uh, uh, in this one, there's even a disclosure at the end of this article that says, Tom Frank Francis used to work for PC Gamer, and we still publish those articles occasionally, but we don't think you should hold that against him. And Tom Frank says is the creator of this game so there's clear nepotism and they're even saying saying that all right how can we do this destroy a friendly minion or discard if we attack and attack we kill both if we do this We can do this. Got lucky. Got real lucky. In the turn. Um, as for the game directly, Gunpoint Heat Signature, it doesn't look particularly great for the one picture they're showing. Uh, uh, PC Gamer in particular, it's always worth pointing out that they are the most like nepotistic of the companies they they were the biggest biggest thing and they have that lovely name of pc gamer in them their title uh that makes them seem like they are a global authority on pc games which is the subtitle on their uh website there but it's not true like if you go l look up a list of people who worked at pc gamer and where they are now Almost everybody either went into some form of video game development or some other form of, uh, well, similar, similarly working for video game companies, even if they just became PR managers. Uh, it's highly nepotistic, like senators getting hired for to be lobbyists for the groups that they used to regulate. 
and it, it just screams of payola and, and bribery. It, it just doesn't sa sound it. The face of it doesn't sound ethical. And then clearly half of PC Gamer's articles are just advertisements that they're getting paid in some way to push specific games. Moving on, uh, owned by the same parent company, Eurogamer, has an article, Ark Survival Evolved, it's Ugly as Dinosaurs, are getting a makeover in the TLC update, which, honestly, I don't see a real reason uh, to, to talk anymore about Ark Survival Evolved at all. Like that game is not was not released in a in a honest way, it feels like, and it doesn't feel like it's finished, and it feels like they're just trying to milk people out of money. However, that being said, these pictures do seem to show better textures for some of the characters. Like some of the characters' uh, original models do look bad, and. Although, to be fair, some of these new ones don't look that much better. So, there feels like there would be room for another update. Uh, part of the problem there is... Is they're updating too new of a game. Whereas, most updates or remasters for games are done at least five years later when the technology is improved and you can actually guarantee that everything will look better and there are no real artistic choices that are that would be made that that only make it seem better to some people's eyes and not others um, like most people don't don't get into the weeds and complain about remasters of games and if they do change anything drastically artistically usually it's you can fix that with just including the original textures in the game. I would say that either Bioshock 1 or Bioshock 2 Remastered did seem like they, they kind of changed some things and it didn't feel quite right to me. Uh, but that's really the only game I can think of that. And it still worked. PC Gamer has another article. Connect Arcade, Kinetic Arcade Game. Uh, arcade action game Violet Cycle launches from early access. Never heard of Violet Cycle. Let's watch the trailer and see if there's anything interesting here. Hmm. See if I if I did put these trailers on my stream, there's a high chance of more content ID copyright uh, claims of for the entire stream because this uncopyrightable advertisement because advertisements are uncopyrightable uh, it still would be claimed just because that's how terrible the YouTube system is Violet Crystal seems like a fast place paced almost Bastion like game uh, I would say Bastion because it there's Definitely ground falling out from beneath you. Um, and it seems like maybe the platforms aren't really going anywhere though. And that they just go up and down levels. And the whole game seems kind of boring. That's it. It's ten dollars. And two people have reviewed it, and that's at 55%. So one person liked it, and one person didn't. If you assume that the one person that liked it worked or had a vested interest to like it, you can almost say you could certainly manipulate the numbers in your mind to say this game has a 0% uh, review. Let's see. Why do I have so many cards? The negative review uh, for one hour of gameplay versus the recommended review of 6.1. Hmm. 
Like, and there's way too many words in this review, and the product was received for free for the positive reviews. The negative review says, Bot Cycle lets its unusual and wiggly graphics get in the way of gameplay and visual clarity too much for me to recommend it. You, you even stare at a steel unmoving surface of water and throw something in it just to marvel on how much liquid moves and creates visible waves just because you threw a single tiny rock in it. Pilot Cycle reminds me of that. Uh, every moment I, every movement I make, especially while in combat, feels wiggly, imprecise, out of my control. Lack of readability in the game is the game's biggest issue. Uh, the environments are cluttered, often with useless scenery, making the game. Uh, to make the game look prettier, which it does very well, but the com that combined with the game's fully visuals and controls makes everything feel disorienting. You're more likely to get hit without understanding why and wonder why you are on the screen amidst, uh, and wonder where you are on the screen. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I can totally see that. Like, looking at this trailer, it seems like it would be confusing. <laughs> is he milling me? Is that what he's doing over here? Because he has 10 cards and I have 18 cards. And he keeps returning things. Alright, how about we do this? Hmm. How do you like that? So, yeah. Violet Cycle, probably just an advertisement on PC Gamer, not something I'm super interested in. I suppose this was news. The Battalion 1944 developer has apologized and acts qui acted quickly to fix the shaky launch. Uh, we are incredibly humbled to receive this many players on day one. Uh, this is your gamer article, but at least they have something to quote, something to say. Half of those half of the articles about video games like there's no statement there's no facts there's nothing is that a demon no deal two damage that'll work uh now i don't know what battalion 1944 is is According to an article, it's an indie first-person shooter, and it launched the 1st of February in a via early access, but the server struggled to cope with demand. And see, that seems like this is more of an advertisement, though. It's like, we're so sorry that there was so much demand for our brand new game uh, that, uh, that we're going to work harder. Uh, it, it seems seems fake and here at the end they say that that your game already wrote an article about battle battalion 1944 and yet i've never even heard of this game and that seems incongruous and battalion 94 44 looks like it's just an old kind of World War II shooter game which shouldn't really catch anybody's attention at all yeah now that I'm looking at the pictures I see no reason why I would want to play this I see no reason why most people would want to play this I don't think there's a high demand to play a less popular game like Call of Duty uh, less popular than Call of Duty World War II uh, and if we're going to be fair here, I think if fantasy games in particular did it correctly, there would be very few people that wanted to stay in the World War II environment. Because uh, there's nothing specifically interesting or, or fun about that environment when you could go fantasy and futuristic. Maybe 
the fantasy and futuristic games just kind of make it feel too unrealistic for some players but really it's the player base that drives that community of first person the first person shooter esports players community more than anything else i would assume uh, that's a bad card for him to le lose there's a game called gender wrecked it's a post-apocalypse game where you have three options to talk fight or, or kiss and your quest to discover the meaning of the mysterious force gender this sounds like uh, a bunch of SJWs made a game uh, if, that's what it's like. you're fighting out with you're fighting these horrific monsters, uh, it seems. Right, let's go ahead and kill this guy and this guy. Hmm. Hmm. The animation style looks like a flat. Sim simple hand sketch animation style so I don't know if there's actually any transitions or anything or if this is just some weird RPG that's really kind of a uh, a dating simulator it's on itch.io and, and with a free demo of the first chapter I don't think anybody should play this game and frankly I don't think anybody this game deserves any coverage uh, just by the look of it, like, regardless of the content and whether I personally agree with it or not, or whether they're going to tell a good story uh, or not, doesn't really mean anything. The fact that it's on itch.io and doesn't look good makes it an uninteresting game to me. Hmm. In a weird bit of news, I, I didn't even know you could do this, PUBG is going to disable fa Steam family sharing in a bid to halt cheaters. Is that going to work? Hmm. Hmm. Like, our top goal is to create an environment to facilitate smooth and unhindered enjoyment, is the quote. Um... So if you disable Steam Family Sharing, you're not going to stop people like me who are streaming and sharing things. But it might stop a few people. Uh, like, they, they need a better anti-cheat system than that, though. Like, let's see. PUBG's anti-cheat solution will be upgraded steadily following the implementations next week. It will be evolved over time. So it's it's very much a stopgap <laughs> movement. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. This is probably the best one to, to sacrifice. Just draw another card in the turn. I have too many cards I'm sacrificing in this deck. PUBG's cheating, I suppose, is still a very big issue. And so there's a, a lot of work that needs to be put into that. Let's see. Battlezone Combat Commander has is a remaster remake uh, to a game in 1999 a real-time strategy first-person shooter hub uh, hybrid called Battlezone 2 Combat Commander so I guess it's a reboot hmm so we can do a comparison trailer here that'll be interesting Stealth and then plus two plus two if it's a demon then this 
Und es. Hmm. So, Battlezone looks like one of those games where you're flying ships roughly floating on top of a landscape. I guess there's land-based land ships too. It, it's kind of the next generation after Star Fox 64, which, well, Star Fox 64 was cool in my mind. It never encouraged me to play any other kind of tank-style game or open arena style game this looks like one of those early pc games where there's it's it's like quake arena where there's no real goals or storyline to be told it's just gameplay on top of gameplay so i think you'd have to be a real fan of the battlezone combat commander series to want to play this and i just am not there's nothing here that looks like a modern game or something that would really interest uh, hmm, uh, really interest new and modern video game players uh, in YouTube's continued uh, bid to to promote people I guess I should just I should just say uh, tweet out to Team YouTube too and see if they retweet me. That they're, they're retweeting some really small people, and like here's one called Rich Richie Stir, R I Y R I C H Y S T R at Twitter, and he posted right back to his his um, YouTube channel. They retweeted him and. From the time of, like, two hours ago, he, uh, he, he got, like, 237 subscribers, and, uh, in the last 30 days, he got 237 subscribers, and the 100,000 views, and the 136,000 our watch minutes so like he's let's let's actually look at his youtube page though because that's what i wanted to see i looked at those numbers and i thought okay maybe he's a small youtuber and he kind of is he only has 1247 people so he got uh he got some subscribers and like, I, I don't know if he just has the connections or not, or if he's just got a lot of, of, um, yeah, I don't know if he's got connections or if he's just got a lot of clickbait ads here. Like, one of his videos says H3H3. Uh, does he actually work for H3H3? Hmm. Why not? his pictures has Gabe Newell in it like he's he's doing all the kinds of clickbait that YouTube loves it's really ridiculous like he had a really bad overlay for his thumbnails originally and he went to from a bad overlay to a slightly better overlay to now kind of a randomly enforced overlay like this guy does not deserve probably even as many views as he has and he has half a million views uh, description hard work beats talent he's he's from Germany but I, I assume he speaks English he's not following any channels hmm so maybe this is what YouTube is doing uh, is maybe team YouTube is, is trying to retweet and like people to get them up above a thousand. Maybe, maybe they, they don't actually like the new rules any more than any of the small people. So 
yeah i guess i guess i should learn from them and and go out there and see if they'll retweet me in, in the same way that i put out a picture of a meme thing to red letter media and they didn't retweet me at all but can't be really surprised about that either they might retweet me later when they get through their entire notifications if they ever look at them um we're not making great progress here <laughs> not at all but we're about an hour into this recording so it's time to break it up and frankly i think i'm just going to go over to the european account like this is going to be a post show just nightmare like it, it's going to give me too much of an excuse to take too much time off uh in, in the silent post show trying to get four victories uh probably going to try every trick in the book uh, every annoying thing that's not worth fall looking at uh just to get to that uh, anyways though that's gonna be it for this recording stay tuned if you're watching live as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below and if you want to support me in any way figure out how you can send me a steam code that's more helpful than watching ads or doing anything else Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.